and build elaborate traps. Victims meet a sticky end. Hidden predators are specialists that are built for the kill. Everywhere on our planet, there are places for killers to hide. Blending into the background is one of the best ways to hunt prey or escape a predator. It's a strategy that can make the world of the unseen one of the safest and one of the most dangerous. The many textures of our world offer countless opportunities for creatures to see without being seen. From the depths of the sea to the deep forest, the name of the game is Masquerade. And the rules dictate that surprise and cunning are the strategies that make the difference between life and death. Enter the secretive world of hide-and-seek as we reveal how some of nature's most ingenious illusions really work. Even from space, this desert looks like a barren wasteland. Endless sand dunes stretch as far as the eye can see. When the sun's up, this place is like a vast hot plate. But at night, it can be freezing cold. This is the Namib, said to be the oldest desert in the world and one of the driest places on Earth. It stretches along the Atlantic coast of southern Africa. It may look completely uninhabitable, but there are plenty of things that thrive here. In an environment like this, creatures need to be highly specialized. This is the Namib Sidewinder, very much at home in this hostile place. For a snake, crawling over loose ground requires a peculiar method of locomotion called sidewinding. In this way, it keeps up a reasonable pace over the burning hot sand. The surface temperature can reach a blistering 65 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Too long in one place, and the snake will cook. Walking on only two loops of its body at any point, the sidewinder is able to keep much of its length off the ground. This reduces heat absorption and provides an efficient means of travel. This snake is superbly adapted for the oven-like heat of the Namib. But how does it hunt? As the day goes by, the heat of the sun dries out any moisture left in the sand, loosening the surface even more and making it harder for the snake to move. So the sidewinder stops and buries itself. Just under the surface, the temperature is bearable. Now, patience is the name of the game. A shovel-nosed lizard also has to deal with the extreme heat. It virtually dances across the hot dunes, lifting its feet in rotation, a bit like a human firewalker running across a hot bed of burning coals. Like the sidewinder, the lizard is also cold-blooded and emerges in the day to warm up. But as the sand gets hotter, it has to play a constant juggling act to avoid fatal overheating.
the Sidewinder may not have much longer to wait. Using a combination of sight, sound and smell, the Sidewinder detects approaching victims and waits for them to come into striking distance. In a lightning fast strike, the snake injected its deadly venom and then released the stricken prey. This lizard hasn't got long to live. The Sidewinder follows its victim's fresh scent trail. The venom gradually disables. The more the lizard moves, the faster the poison pumps through its system. also start the digestion process by breaking down tissue. The Namib Sidewinder has perfected the art of desert survival. It's built to live with burning hot sand and virtually no water. And it has developed a near perfect strategy for hiding and ambushing prey. The underwater world of the coral reef makes big demands on both predator and prey. This cluttered maze-like environment is full of nooks and crannies. Success here is often down to who's best at hide and seek. To survive, you have to keep an eye out. These eyes belong to a flounder, one of a number of strange flatfish that live in the world's oceans. Using loose sand and special color-changing cells, they cleverly disguise themselves. But flounders aren't natural-born hidden killers. Hatchlings swim upright and their eyes are on either side of their head. Adults have perfected the art of blending into their background. Only the eyes protrude. Keeping watch. The eyes move independently, so they can cover a wide area and allow the flounder to remain undetected. The flounder's chosen a hot spot where reef fish flit between the coral, looking for things to eat. Like little periscopes, its eyes scan the vicinity for activity. Yellow tang. Before a flounder strikes, its target must be within range. If they're not, the killer will miss. It'll have to keep looking and be ready when it counts. Inside its mouth, the flounder has powerful teeth. These make short work of prey. As it strikes, its mouth opens, creating a strong suction. This yellow tang is literally sucked in. This bizarre killer is superbly adapted to a bottom-feeding life. It doesn't have the muscle and agility for the chase, but its flattened, distorted body means it's built for the kill. And it's not the only one. Another bit of ocean, busy with life. 
another flatfish looking for a meal. But this meal belongs to an underwater fisherman, an anglerfish. Chasing prey consumes energy, so the anglerfish has evolved a more subtle approach. The hungry flatfish can't see beyond the lure. This elongated, stiffened dorsal fin ray is completely separate, forming a long stalk tipped with a tattered colored shred. Specially designed muscles make it twitch and move, just like a fisherman moves his rod. Lurking below, the anglerfish has skin that blends right in with the sea floor. Inside the mouth, a row of long, curved, hinged teeth are designed to fold flat as food passes down and spring back up should the victim try to escape. The fish waves its lure and waits. It didn't take long. This fisherman loves all sorts of seafood, from squid and crustaceans to inquisitive fish. The anglerfish uses a simple yet effective ploy to catch its prey. The irresistible worm proves to be a fatal attraction for many as they are tempted into the jaws of this clandestine killer. This is a sea within a sea. It's the Sargasso, an area in the middle of the North Atlantic where the waters are calm and strewn with mats of strange, free-floating seaweed. This island has some specialized species all its own. Many of the creatures that live here are fantastically camouflaged. This hidden predator is the incredible Sargassum frogfish. Flamboyant growths and flaps of skin copy the exact shape, texture and color of the weed. With such convincing camouflage, all the frogfish has to do is anchor itself to the weed and keep its eyes peeled. Like the anglerfish, a growth on its head acts as a lure while the large mouth waits to strike. Remarkably, this fish uses its fins to grip the weed. This is a fish that doesn't swim like one at all. And the fins hold it perfectly still in position. Then it waits for prey to come close. This shrimp is also highly camouflaged. But that doesn't mean it's any better at spotting the danger staring it in the face. second, the shrimp is a goner. The frogfish attack is over in the blink of an eye, faster than that of any other fish, surprising their victims when they're least expecting it. Sargasso sea rules dictate that camouflage and cunning make you built for the kill.
Amazon river water may be murky, but it's home to some of the most colorful creatures. These iridescent little fish are tetra, a fish tank favorite. But the Amazon doesn't just harbor beauty, it's also home to the beast. These hands belong to a killer, the peeper toad. Each fingertip has tiny feelers at the end. Lunging towards a small tetra with its mouth agape, the toad sucks its victim in. Expanding its square-shaped body creates a suction that draws in water, fish, and anything else that happens to be in the vicinity with it. The toad has other weapons, too. Like fish, they possess a lateral line. This row of highly sensitive cells runs the length of their bodies and detects slight changes in the surrounding water pressure. Even those fish outside the toad's field of vision are detected through the movements they make. And anything the toad fancies that makes the mistake of swimming in front of it is likely to pay the consequences. prolific predator, and yet it has no teeth or tongue. Its long fingers pull prey to their death. is full of surprises. Who would expect a weird and wonderful hidden killer to be a toad? Some underwater predators even break the rules and manage to operate on dry land. This is Kiweu Island, part of a small archipelago lining the Kenyan coast. At low tide, the beaches become busy with tourists, hordes of ghost and fiddler crabs. Scouring the sand for scraps of food, the crabs transform this beach into a promenade. But the tide's already on its way back in, so they don't have long. Watching their every move is another tidal visitor. But it's not waiting for the water. It's crabbing. Not even the crab's sharp pincers can help now. Octopuses are primitive creatures with a remarkably developed brain and nervous system. This is one intelligent invertebrate. The sucker-covered, multi-armed killer grabs the crab while its beak is busy cracking the shell. But the octopus hasn't finished yet. Like some creature from a B-movie, it leaves the water and heads onto land. As the arms stretch out, they find a purchase and pull the body along. Every tentacle contains about 50 million nerves, but only a few of these actually connect to the octopus's brain so each arm works independently from the others and from the brain itself. Because octopuses breathe through gills, they can't stay out of water for very long. These incredible creatures can change both shape and color in an instant, blending seamlessly into their surroundings. This amazing feat is achieved by changing the level of color in cells called chromatophores. These are small elastic sacs surrounded by muscular rings that control the distribution of pigment. Yeah. 
It's also through fantastic muscular control that these bizarre boneless creatures even change the texture of their skin. By flexing small protrusions, they complete their disguise. Although they're strong swimmers, they often hunt by stealth, leaping out on unwary passers-by. Octopuses move with speed and agility. Using a type of jet propulsion, they force water through their siphon, which propels them forward. But even octopuses are vulnerable. They must be careful in open water, so much of their time is spent hidden away in the nooks and crannies of the reef. They come in all shapes and sizes too. Some are tiny enough to use an old shell as a safe house. While others build their own dens using rubble and rocks to cover themselves. places such as these, they can keep watch and take their time selecting targets for attack. Octopuses have large eyes, adapted to function in underwater light. And their preference for crab is the same underwater as it is on the beach. With the victim firmly trapped by the strong mantle, the crab is unable to escape. The eight arms with their rows of sensitive suckers are simply too much for just one crab to handle. It may have as many as 1,600 individual suckers to deal with. Each of these suckers may have as many as 10,000 neurons to provide taste and touch information. They work well to grip slippery prey like fish. But it's the octopus's beak, located in the center of all this, which does the killing. As soon as the first bite is delivered, toxins are secreted that help disable the victim, breaking down the tissue before it has even been swallowed. When they do venture away from the reef, it's often to go in search of prey. Crayfish can sense approaching danger and will run for cover. But the octopus has keen senses and a predator's instinct. Faced with an intelligent, eight-armed killer, there's no escape. The octopus is a highly adapted stealth predator that can even venture onto land in search of its prey. Freshwater lakes and streams are home to a truly extraordinary hidden killer. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. Viewed in close-up, this river is the backdrop for a microscopic battleground where some of nature's most primitive creatures are set against each other. Believe it or not, this is one of nature's most adaptable predators, despite the fact that it hasn't got a brain, just a network of nerve cells. Hydra anchor themselves to aquatic plants while their tentacles float idly underwater, like an extension of the plant itself. Although Hydra have only a very basic nervous system, they still respond to touch.
The hydra are trying to catch cyclops, one-eyed crustaceans. There are several narrow escapes. The tentacles are equipped with venomous stinging cells containing nematocysts, among the most complex cellular organs on Earth. The hydra has four different stinging cells at its disposal. Some are designed to sting and paralyze, while others discharge threads which coil around a victim in a death grip. When the tentacles entrap a struggling victim, they'll guide it into the hydra's open mouth. It's when a prospective meal swims past and accidentally touches a tentacle that the hydra showers its victim with poisonous threads. The venom they discharge is thought to act on the nervous system because it is so fast working. Once caught, this cyclops is quickly paralyzed before being brought to the hydra's primitive digestive center and devoured. This tiny killer's body is like a hollow tube, only two cell layers thick. It's used like a sleeve when it eats. It can even be turned inside out and still function. The Hydra's body design is so primitive that it ejects any debris through its mouth. Every few weeks, each body cell is replaced, keeping this remarkable creature healthy, ready, and waiting for its next meal. This strange necklace-like decoration hanging from the roof of a New Zealand cave is a deadly trap. The killer that laid this snare is waiting for the moth it has caught to stop struggling. And this killer isn't even fully grown. It's a larva of the fungus fly. When it grows up, it will not eat at all. But for now, it has a big appetite. But to work, this trap needs certain conditions. Humidity to prevent dehydration, a suitable overhang from which to sling the threads, and no breeze so that they don't get tangled. Above all, there needs to be plenty of insect action. When conditions are right, this mass of sticky strands is absolutely deadly. As night falls, yet another trick the fungus fly larva has comes to light. It's bioluminescent, able to glow in the dark like a small torch, creating a deadly lure. And even the sticky globules on the lava's threads flicker in the dark like a starscape, adding to the confusion for night-flying insects. Once caught, there's no getting away for this unfortunate moth. As it struggles to free itself, it actually makes matters worse. The violent movement sends vibrations along the lines, alerting the predator waiting in the dark. It's easy pickings for the larva now. All it has to do is haul in the line and enjoy its lunch. This larva is an extremely active predator for the first nine months or so of its life. It has to be, because in adult life, 
it retires from killing altogether. Central America, there are all sorts of strange goings on. Not everything is what it appears to be. Another tricky customer is at work. This is a young cantil viper, and it's using its agile tail to imitate a wriggling worm. Mimicry at its most sophisticated, designed purely to lure inquisitive prey. A hungry frog is a perfect audience. If it wasn't so focused on the worm, it might just see what's lurking beneath. Viper with deadly heat-seeking sensors. Because it's cold-blooded, this frog is actually cooler than its surroundings, but the snake's heat-sensing pits are just as able to pick out colder objects, which create a kind of heat void. is working its magic. The snake doesn't exactly hide, but it has distracted the frog so that it's not being seen. struggles to free itself, the viper's fangs have already begun to inject it with a lethal dose of poison. The frog finally succumbs to the effects of massive internal bleeding. A potent venom, cunning decoy and rapid strike combine to make sure that even a young cantil viper is a proficient killer. As the frog is swallowed, the snake can save any further expense of energy because the venom has started the digestive process. Vipers are incredibly efficient predators. Their tactic is ambush, the strike is quick, and no struggle ensues. All in all, this young cantil viper is one of nature's great con artists, a wolf in sheep's clothing, using a clever ploy to entrap a victim. its way through large sand grains and stones, but a much bigger obstacle takes it by surprise. It's wandered into a large sand crater, and the loose grains are making it difficult to climb back out. The ant is trapped. As the ant begins to struggle harder to get out, something in the center, underneath the ground, is beginning to move. After a desperate fight, the ant disappears. And there's more than one hidden killer around these parts. In fact, the whole place is alive with these dreadful creatures. Insects passing through here must run a gauntlet of ant-lion traps. The traps are sophisticated structures, carefully designed by their architects to incarcerate victims. The ground is like a minefield.
The antlion is a true ugly duckling. When it grows up, it transforms into a beautiful lacewing. But for now, it's an ant's worst nightmare. The pits are formed by the antlion pushing its backside into the sand and spiraling downwards. This is not as easy as it looks. Each pit takes about 15 minutes to complete. No mean feat for such a tiny creature. Using its head, it prepares the sides of the trap with fine sand at an angle that makes it difficult for trapped insects to climb out. Then the killer buries itself at the bottom of the pit to wait for the next victim. There's plenty of ant traffic around here. It doesn't take long. The ant doesn't seem to see what it's getting into. As the ant struggles to climb the sides of the pit, the predator lurking below begins to throw sand at it with surprising precision, making the victim's climb even more difficult. Any attempt the ant makes to escape is prevented by the relentless efforts of this underground hunter. Another victim is about to make the same fatal mistake. Like some beast in the cellar from a horror film, the ant lion seems to have an insatiable appetite for killing. Showers of sand and tiny landslides send many insects to premature burials. Success at last. The ant has lost its footing and slides straight into the waiting pincers of its killer. The ant lion injects poison and digestive juices before sucking its victim dry. It's not just ants that get caught in these deadly traps. Even bigger insects are doomed when they fall into the ant lion's terrible death pit. And termites don't fare any better. All the ant lion has to do is sit and wait for its next visitor. Painstakingly digging their two inch or five centimeter wide conical pits, they hide in the center of their traps like spiders in their webs. This hidden killer's predatory tactics exploit the desert's sandy terrain. The rules of the game here mean you use any strategy you can to catch your prey. When you think killer, you don't immediately think of plants, but they are. And they're among the most highly disguised of all predators. They may not be fast chase, powerful Finnish killers, but they're all carnivores. So how do they do it? Through subterfuge. These are pitcher plants. They attract prey through a mixture of attractive color, smell, and nectar. Some pitcher species even have UV patterns that resemble flowers. The brim of the pitcher produces a lot of nectar, but to get to it, you have to step on the slippery edge. And below, there's a pool of digestive juices. Carnivorous plants have developed these ingenious designs to supplement the meager nutrition available. It's a bit like taking a vitamin pill. This is a sundew plant, covered in pretty red tentacles with small glittering dewdrops attached. They may look pretty, but to an insect, they're deadly. These globules are incredibly sticky, and there may be as many as 200 tentacles on each leaf, spread out to cover a wide area. When an insect lands on a leaf, it gets stuck fast. 
there's no hope of getting away. insect struggles, receptors in the leaf cause it to curl inwards, closing the tentacles over the captured prize, while a digestive fluid is released, suffocating the victim. It takes several days for the digestion process to be completed, depending on the prey. The most notorious of all carnivorous plants is the Venus flytrap. This beetle has unknowingly entered a killing field of open traps, ready to close over an unfortunate victim. The two lobes of the leaves can close quickly, triggered by the sensitive hairs on the inside. Narrow escapes are commonplace. But not every intruder is so lucky. These traps are not for slow movers. As the hairs on the inside of the trap are triggered, it's believed that water stored in cells along the inner surface of the trap rapidly moves to cells along the outer surface. This makes the two halves of the spiky plant stomach close quickly, fast enough to catch a fly. Once it's caught inside, the spikes act like a bear trap, imprisoning the victim. The flytrap's digestive fluid works like an acid bath. It will be a slow, lingering death. Some have a very lucky escape. Most will be entombed while the plant absorbs all the goodness. In this life or death struggle, who'd think the plants could win? In the world of hidden killers, camouflage can make predators invisible to their prey. A monstrous mouth lies in wait for unwary victims. And even where there are few places to hide, there are deadly hunters skilled at working undercover. Clandestine killers come in all shapes and sizes. Bizarre looking, these unlikely hunters are natural masters of deceit and disguise. To survive this deadly game of hide and seek, you must be built for the kill. <laughs> 